Building a full stack web application involves a lot of moving pieces. First and foremost, you need to figure out what you're going to use for your front end and your back end frameworks, how you're going to communicate between them securely, and what UI components you want to use. You also need to figure out how you're going to tie all of these together with some build tooling and how you're going to maintain this whole thing for the duration of the lifetime of the application. So you want to make sure you get this right. Now, Bodden is an open source development platform specifically designed for building web apps on Java backends. Bodden helps you be productive by giving you everything you need to build a modern web application in one package. It gives you the components, the tools, and the frameworks that you need. So in this video, I'm going to show you hands-on how Vaadin simplifies web development and helps you turn your ideas into apps real quick. The Vaadin platform consists of three major parts, a configurable set of UI components and two frameworks that use them. Vaadin Flow is a unique framework because it lets you build the entire application fully in Java, so you can build both the backend and the views in Java. Vaadin Fusion, on the other hand, takes a modern reactive TypeScript front-end and ties it type safely to a Java backend. Let's begin by looking at the components. Using a set of components help you develop apps faster because you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Bond's UI components are fully customizable, accessible, and they work great on mobile devices. Now let's take a look at how we can use these components to build an app with the Flow framework. Modern Flow is a component-based event-driven framework. It allows you to build web applications very similarly to how you would build desktop applications by abstracting away many of the web-specific uh, technologies. So let's take a look at how we could build a fairly simple CRUD application that displays some data from our database in a table and lets us edit that data. So I'm here in a Vaadin flow-based view. And this view extends from a vertical layout. That means that every component that I add to this layout will get placed underneath the previous one. In my application here, I have a service class. Uh, in this case, I'm in a Spring application, so I have a Spring service class that accesses a database repository and exposes two API methods, one for finding all uh, the people in my database and one for saving a given person. So what we can do is we can auto wire in this person service Let's call it service. And we'll assign this to a field so we have access to it later on. So what we can do is, first of all, let's just take a look at an example of using a Vaadin grid to display these people. So I'll create a new grid to instantiate a new grid component. And this will be typed with a person so that the grid knows what kind of data we're going to show. And then we're going to call grid.setItems. And we're going to pass in the result from calling the service and calling find all on it like this. So now we have a grid populated uh, with the items from calling find all. And then finally, we're going to call add with grid. And what this will do is it will add our grid to this vertical layout, which will make it show up here. And there you go. So now we can see we have a bunch of data here on people. Now we're just going to work with a small subset of these. So I'm actually going to configure this to only show the first name, last name and email. So I'm going to call set columns. And just type in the property names, first name, last name and email like this. And we now have a grid displaying those three. All right, now let's take a look at building a form where we can edit the selected person here. So for that, I'm going to create a custom component. So essentially, I'm going to extend one of the built in Vaadin components to create my own little helper component. So I'll create a class in line here, call this form and we'll extend from the Vaadin form layout. And in here, we can then start kind of building out the form. So for the form, I want to have text fields for each of these uh, properties and then a button for saving. So I'll create a text field. It'll be called first name. This will be equal to a new text field. 
uh, copy that and do the same for last name. And then we're going to use a email field for capturing the email. And I'll just instantiate this to a new email field like that. Pass in captions here so people know what to enter here. So first name, last name, and email like that. All right, and then I'll create a constructor here. So for the form, what we'll do is we'll add first name, last name, and email. Then I want to have a button that we can use for submitting this. So the save button will be a new button that says save. And we need to make sure we import that. And then we'll add that to here. Save button like that. All right, so now that we have our form component here, we can go ahead and instantiate a form here. So I'll put uh, form is equal to a new form like that. And then we'll add this here to the layout like so. Again, we'll save and then we'll refresh our browser. And sure enough, now we can see the, the form here. Now, the next thing we need to do is configure a binder so that we can bind these UI fields to the values that we get from the selected uh, person here. So for that, we're going to create a new binder. I'm going to create it here as a field. So we'll have a binder that's uh, typed with a person. I'll call this binder. And this will be equal to a new binder. We'll import that. And we'll pass in person.class here. All right. And actually, I'm not going to use the standard binder here, because on my person object, I've defined some validations here. So I'm saying like the email needs to be a valid email, the names cannot be blank and so forth. So we can actually use a bean uh, validation binder like that. And the API is the same there. So now that we're using this uh, to bind our values, we will actually get all of these uh, validation rules that we have here for free. All right, so now that we have the binder uh, created, we can call binder dot bind instance fields with this layout as the parameter. And what this means is that the binder will look at our for, uh, form class here, and it will specifically look at the fields here and their names and match them by name to the person entity that we have. So that will kind of do the binding between the values. The other part that I want here is an API for setting the uh, uh, for setting the actual uh, person here. So let's create a set person method here that takes in a person. And what we'll do here is, well, first of all, I want to save this to a field so I have access to it later. And then I'm going to call binder dot read. And I'll pass in that person like that. And this should obviously be a void method because it doesn't return anything. So now we have a way of uh, populating in the person here. Of course, we don't need to configure the grid to actually call it. So the way we can do that is by taking the grid, saying as single select. So the grid can support both multiple and single selects. But in this case, we are only interested in, in one value. So we can then add a value change listener. And when that event happens, we can then do something about it. In our case, what we want to do is we want to call, sorry, should have used the right kind of error there. And what we want to do here is we want to call, let's see, actually, we need to move the form 
up here. So we're going to call form.set person, and then we're going to get the selected person from the event like that. All right. So let's save this uh, build and see what the result is. So we now still see the people. And when we click on one person, we can now see those values getting populated here. All right, so the next thing I want to do is hook up the save button here so that we actually uh, save that person. So again, we'll go into our form and we're going to hook up the save button to an action. So we can go in here and we'll take the save button and we're going to add a click listener. And on click, what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, to write the bean back into this person object. And if that goes well, then we're going to save it to the service. So let's do a try catch. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to call binder dot write bean. And then we're going to pass in the person here. So the object that we are editing, if that goes well, if we don't fall through here to the exception, we're going to call service.save with that person. Then what I want to do is I want to update the grid. Right now we're only updating it uh, in here. So I'm actually going to extract that to a, another method here. So I'm going to create a void update method here. And in there, I'm going to call this uh, method to, to actually find all of them. Now, at this point, the grid is not visible. So we actually need to move it up here. And of course, we can't use var here. So what we need to do is define the type here. So a grid of type person. Okay, so pretty much the same still, we're configuring the grid. The one thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we call update when we initialize the view. And then also when we save, so we'll call update here. And we'll go ahead and save and see how this works. Okay, so we can now see the people again, we can select them. And if everything went well, we can actually go ahead and change these values. So let's save and we can see that the value is persisted here. If we refresh, you can see that the value is still there even after refresh. So it actually got saved to the database. So Flow is this framework that allows you to build modern web applications fully in Java. So if you enjoy working with Java and you feel like uh, this component-based model is the way that you like to express yourself when you're building apps, this is the framework for you. Next, let's take a look at how we can build the same application using the Fusion framework and reactive TypeScript views. Fusion uses a component-based development model as well. We define our views in TypeScript classes with declarative templates that get automatically updated whenever the component state changes. So let's go ahead and recreate the same CRUD application that we did with Flow using Fusion. So we're going to go back to the same service that we had, and we're going to add a couple of annotations to it so we can call it from the browser. We're going to add a endpoint annotation for Vaadin to export these methods. We're going to add a anonymous allowed annotation to allow anyone to call them. We're not going to get into security in this little tutorial. Next, we need to synchronize how null values are handled across Java and TypeScript. So Java is notoriously lax when it comes to handling null values, essentially allowing null pretty much anywhere except for primitives, whereas TypeScript is very strict on it. So as a API designer here, I'm going to say that I'm never going to return a null instead of a list here. So I'm going to say none null here. And likewise, if I return a list, none of the uh, values within that list will be null values. So that's going to make it a little bit easier for me to use those. And that's going to allow my backend and front end teams to avoid kind of having miscommunications as to expectations with what kind of data we're going to get. All right, so we have our view here. And let's go ahead and 
start by creating a grid for us to display uh, these people in. So I'm going to go into the template here and I'm going to create a Wadden grid. And inside the grid, I will create three columns Wadden grid column. And for each, I'm going to map the path value. So we're going to have three of these. First path will be first name, then last name, and then email. All right, so next we're going to call the server to actually fetch those people. For that, I'm going to override the connected callback, uh, which is called whenever this view is added to the DOM. I'm going to call super.connected callback to make sure the view gets initialized, and then I can call our endpoint service here. Now, any communication between the browser and the server with modern fusion is asynchronous by default. So we're going to use the async await uh, feature of TypeScript to make that pretty uh, straightforward. Now, when we call the server, we're going to get back an array of person objects. So we're going to save that as a state variable on our view here. So we're going to say state, and we're going to have a array here of type person array that's initialized to just an empty array. And we can import this person. So this is the first thing that we'll see that gets generated by uh, Fusion. So we have now a TypeScript type person that matches what we have in Java. So we didn't have to create this ourselves, uh, but make sure that that stays in sync with whatever is in Java. So uh, we have full type safety from the back end to the front end. So what we'll do here is we'll say this dot people is equal to what we get back by awaiting the per, uh, person service dot find all. And we need to, of course, import this person service like this. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And right now it's not going to display anything quite yet because we need to take this array of people and pass them to the grid here. So I'm going to say items is equal to, and then use a simple uh, JavaScript uh, interpolation here to bind that to this dot people like that. And with that, you can see that we now have a grid here displaying all the people. So the next thing we want to do is create a form where we can again display the selected person. So we'll go below here. And we're going to use some of the built in CSS helper classes here to create a uh, layout for the for the form. So we're going to use a grid layout. We're going to have two columns in it. We're going to have a medium gap between those. And we're going to say that the items should be aligned to the baseline like that. So in here, Again, we're going to have fields for first name, last name, and email, and then a button for saving. So we'll have lot in text field with a label, and we're going to have two of those. So the first one will be for first name. The second one will be for last name. Then we're going to have a lot in email field the label of email. And finally, we're going to have a button button that says save. All right, save that. Fresh, and we can see that we have now the, the form here. All right, so next thing we want to do is handle the selection here in the grid so that we can track who is the selected person at any given time and bind them here uh, in the grid. So for that, we're going to add the listener on the grid for listening for the active item change. And we'll create a method that we can call for it. So we'll call this active changed. And this will take in an event that will be of type grid active item change event. And that'll be typed with the person so we know what we're getting. And what happens here is we want to keep track of that person that's selected. So again, we'll use a state property for that. And we'll just say selected here. And 
type will be of person. Now this might be undefined as well, which we can indicate with a question mark here. And then we can just call this dot selected is equal to event dot detail dot value. And we can see that that value is of type person here. All right, so now that we have the listener here, we need to bind it. And the way we do that is by having an at symbol for uh, binding to an event. And then we use the active item changed event here to bind to our active item, uh, active changed event like that. So the syntax here is we use a dot prefix for binding to properties and then an at prefix for binding to events. And then finally, we're going to say that the selected items for this grid should be equal to an array of that selected person. So uh, again, the, the grid supports both single and multi-select. This way, we're essentially doing a single select grid. Again, we'll save here and make sure that this works. So now we, we can see that we can select uh, rows in the grid. Next thing we want to do is actually bind those here to the to the form. Again, the form uses a binder very similar to to how flow works. So we're going to create a new binder. The binder will be equal to a new binder that takes in this element, and then a model. So we'll pass in a person model. Person model is something that the endpoint generates as well. It's essentially a description of that person along with all the validation rules. So we can see that there are some validation rules here like not blank and email, for instance. All right, so now that we have the binder, what we're going to do is whenever uh, the value changes, we're going to read that into the binder. So if this dot selected, what we're going to do is we're going to call this dot binder dot read and read in this dot selected. If we don't have a selected, so if we unselect the uh, grid, we're going to call this dot binder dot clear like that. All right, so now we bound, uh, we've bound the selected person uh, to the binder, and that allows us to now use that binder. So we're going to go here, we're going to into the render method, we're going to extract out the model property from the binder. And with the model here, we can use the field directive to bind these fields to the binder. So syntax looks like this, again, a, a just a regular JavaScript interpolation, and we're going to use the field directive here to bind to the model. And then we can see that the first one will be to the first name property, second will be to the last name property, and third one will be to the email property like this. All right, so we'll go ahead and save here and verify that we are now able to select these. All right, so next thing we want to do again is go ahead and save these. So we want to hook up the save button to actually save them. So we're going to add a event listener again, this time for the click event. We're going to bind this to this dot save. And we don't have that. So we'll just go up here and, and it, uh, create it. So ex again, we're going to have an asynchronous method because we're doing a server call to save it. And all the communication is asynchronous and non blocking. So we'll create an async method called save. And what we do here is we tell the binder to submit to the save method on our service and then capture what we get back. So the saved person will be equal to what we get from awaiting this dot binder dot submit to. And then we pass in the person service save method like that. All right. And then if we have a saved person, what we want to do is we want to update the local state here. So we're going to map over 
the people that we have and just swap out that one person that got saved. So we'll say this dot people is equal to this dot people dot map. And this will give us every existing uh, person one at a time. And what we then want to check for if the existing person's ID is equal to the saved person's ID. Then we want to swap it out. So we're just going to return the saved value. If not, we're going to return the existing value. So what the map here essentially does, it returns a new array where only one item has been swapped out for the saved value. All right. Go ahead and hit save there, refresh, and see if this works. So let's go ahead and change a value here, press save. You can see that it's updated here. We should be able to go ahead and refresh, see that it's still here. And we should be able to actually go into the flow version and see that it's persisted here. And we can continue editing it from here. All right, so there you have it. Vaughn is a platform for building modern web applications that connect to Java backends. To get started, visit vaughn.com slash start and join us on our Discord if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and happy hacking.